Hello, sweethearts and lovelies. Welcome back again to my basement. Now, what do I have to show you now? Well, it's pretty special. But it won't be apparent at first. It's this. This spot right here. It's just a chair, right? Well, <laughs> it is now. But, ten years ago, a PC was right here. And on that PC, I made my very first LP video. That's right. It has been ten years. A decade of me making videos for the internet. I can't believe it. <laughs> Time flies. I was actually DMing on Twitter with somebody who uh, found me, a fan of mine. And uh, they seemed to be really enamored with me. Like, oh my gosh, I finally get to talk with my, one of my favorite childhood YouTubers. And that's like incredibly flattering. I don't think I deserve that treatment. I'm just a guy, but I'm flattered all the same. Now, uh, tragically, <laughs> my early Let's Plays don't really exist anymore. They were on Google Video. <laughs> To uh, give you a little story, we're going to use this video as sort of a uh, retrospective slash clip show. So, uh, 2007, I get into uh, the whole Let's Play thing. I watch stuff on Something Awful, Deceased Crab, Ultra J-Man, you know, just really dipping my toes in that whole thing. And I'm like, this looks fun. I'd like to make this. Christmas 2007, get my own PC. It has a microphone. I grab a shitty copy of, like, Camtasia or whatever. And I play Monster in My Pocket, and a couple other games in that time frame too. Uh, Darkwing Duck on NES, Worm Journey to the Center of the Earth, probably some other things too. I can't really remember it right now, but those are the main three that I remember were my first big Let's Plays. Which, I actually did some of those over again, but whatever. <laughs> we're just focusing on this corner right now. So, yeah, I was a freelancer for a little while, just doing shit on Google Video, which it's all gone now. But uh, in May 2008, my first videos went on YouTube because uh, Google Video was fucking up, so I just made a YouTube account. And uh, ironic, considering now that <laughs> Google and YouTube are the same thing, but I didn't know that back then. And so I uh, put up a Zelda 2 Let's Play, I believe, at the time. I might have been doing Indiana Jones on the Super Nintendo at the same time, but I forget. But, uh, anyway, let's look at a clip of the very first video I put on YouTube. And then I'll go upstairs and we'll do a voiceover thing. Hey again, guys! I'm Freezing Inferno, and you're watching Let's Play Zelda 2. Today, we're going to a new town. First, we have to go through the icky swamp, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no! And your boob is slowed in here. And you have a lot of... Octora ah! You... Bastard. Ooh, an experience bag. 50 points. Ah. It's like nothing's changed, really. The same old Fresno. Even from 10 years across the Gulf. Well, this is different now. <laughs> Back then, I was still using a keyboard and doing live commentary because I didn't know any better. But I'd learn as time went on. <laughs> and one of the places I would learn from, actually, is uh, around the same time. I joined Let's Play Forum, which uh, was interesting. I posted a bunch of stuff there, got accepted into the community and whatnot. There's still some people from there that I talk to, to this day, even though I'm not part of Let's Play Forum anymore. But we'll get to that in our retrospective. This could be a bit of a long one, but uh, indulge me. It's my 10-year anniversary. I want to get a little, you know, in-depth, so to speak. So before we really get to that, I'm going to point poke at a couple of other things that I did. Here's a clip from a Let's Play that became a bit of a running gag on my channel. Miracle Girls. <laughs> so, I'm sure y'all love this one. So, let's take a look at that old chestnut. Alright. This is the fun part here after the checkpoint. You got lots of cannons around. Whoa! Whoa! Stupid... Dice? Is that a dice or a block of cheese? I, I can't tell. Now, right, something interesting about these cannons. Just the cannons can eat candy, but the cannonballs can. The cannonballs can be fed candy. You could feed cannonballs candy in this game. 
There, I filled my prerequisite. Ah, prerequisite. I get to say something weird. Thing. Oh, well, I didn't mean. I didn't really mean to come up here, but but okay. Well, that was pleasing. You know, that's not so bad. <laughs> Now, 2008 had some more interesting stuff in it. Namely, a challenge thread on the Let's Play forum. Yes, I remember, they had a lot of challenge threads and stuff, just having fun, goofing off, whatnot. And I made a thing for them. There was a uh, talk really fast without taking a breath challenge or some shit like that. So I played a game called Shatterhand on Nintendo, and I made up a fast-talking, silly voice. Little did I know that this would be the first of the silly voices, the birth of them. A voice that I would later refine in a little parody series just of me talking fast and playing un lp -able games. Witness, kids, the birth, as it was, of the Duke of Cankernickles. Oh, look at Teleporter! Zoom, bang, zoom, bang, zoom! <clears throat> now what? I'm ready! I'm ready to fight this M. Bison look like shooting a gun! Do boo ba do! Slice my options, slice! Slice into bits! <laughs> oh, it's ever so much fun to slice an M. Bison clothes and destroy him! Look at him explode because of my sheer awesomeness! Oh boy! Ever so much fun! Holy shit. Compared to later appearances by the Duke, <laughs> that was downright mellow. <laughs> Well, 2008 came to a close pretty quickly, and uh, I made a friend on the LP forum, the Let's Play forum. Her name was Rizu Kamesu, and uh, Rizu, if you're out there watching this, I don't know if you are or not, can't thank you enough for everything. You were my first uh, LP pal, so to speak, the first person I met from LP, so uh, can't thank you enough for that, and for other things that you uh, did for me later, but... <laughs> In the meantime, how did I repay this amazing friend? <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you the story behind this. I'm not exactly proud of it now. I probably wouldn't do this now in hindsight. You know, ten years of hindsight. But I was getting a lot of comments because, you know, I have a certain cadence and kind of a lispy thing going with my voice. It's kind of effeminate and high-pitched. You know, big fucking deal. But back then, people were like, <laughs> Your voice sounds gay. Why, you sound like one of them homosexuals. Like, your voice sounds gay. Your voice. Like, got nothing to do. Who gives a shit? Anyway. So, I was doing a LP of Castlevania 2 on the Game Boy. And I wanted to do a little gimmick where uh, I tried to change my voice with a voice modulator, so to speak. But then I changed my voice into a woman's voice. Yeah, the height of fucking comedy in 2008. I know, I know. I'm only highlighting this because it was my first real collaboration with Rizu. So, uh, check this shit out, I guess. Not exactly the proudest of it, but, you know, warts and all. Happy 10th anniversary. Here you go. Oh, have I mentioned how I fucking hate bats? <sighs> but they're not that much of a problem here. Except for that one! Fuck you. <laughs> Already going right down here to grab the candle, and we move on. So far, a pretty simple castle. It's not that bad. Okay, why are there spikes on the ceiling here? There is absolutely no point. Who the shit would be dumb enough to jump into them? Ugh, <sighs> sorry. It kind of takes me off that people would be that stupid. And we run into our old friends, the eyeballs, and the ball-spinning statues. It's pretty much your level, and as before, if you hit the eyeballs while they are on the bridge, parts of the bridge will be taken out. Holy shit, I'm gonna level with you. I haven't heard that voice in years. So, that really took me back, this uh, retrospective... God, I'm all melancholy now, holy shit. So, 2008 came to a close, my first full year of LP. <laughs> don't worry, I won't be as thorough with the other years, I don't think. <laughs> And Rizu was kind enough to get me an in with a up-and-coming hot LP uh, friend circle called the Chat for Non-Losers. <laughs> so this had a lot of people in it. Now, the biggest names you'll probably know from it, if you're in the LP scene, are S.S. Skinner and Lord Vega, who, well, yeah... So they became pals of mine, and there were a bunch of other people, Raniac, Omega Zoltan, as I mentioned, uh, King of Solomon, not Dave, just a whole bunch of people 
a lot of whom I haven't talked to in ages, but, you know, I still generally am aware of their social circles and whatnot. So that was a great time. So, you know, let's look at an old clip of, uh, I believe, Mega Man Extreme with me and S.S. Skinner talking over it, just to illustrate, you know, this part of my LP world. So let's take a peek at that. They are annoying dick bats. <laughs> as long as they die, who cares? Yeah, this this is a crazy ass part too with the bats and the mets. It's just fucked. Yeah, I hate those little wheelie things too. They're really annoying. Yeah, the wheelies aren't so bad. Just give them a chart. Thank God they give you like auto charts, so I don't have to hold down the button constantly. Oh, that's nice, yeah. You could also set it to rapid fire too. That, that there's a weird ass trick. The screen scrolls too far, and it's like it fucks you up. Yeah, well, you know, and then the bats all come at the same time, so, like, that's yeah. just helpful. Too. Another bit of classic history. It was actually around this time that we, the Chat for Not Losers group, left Let's Play Forum because of disagreements with the, the head honcho, so to speak. Power corrupts and all that shit, so it, it was bad business. We just cut our ties and did our own thing. We actually started our own little blog, which ran for a while. It was nice. It was good times. It didn't last forever, but it was fun while it lasted. So I'm jumping ahead now a fair bit to around the fall of 2009, where I had my most ambitious goddamn thing yet. The Super Back to the Future 2 Let's Play. Which, in my mind, was a combination of silly sprite comic story bullshit I had in my head. A narrative, so to speak, wrapped around the Let's Play, of this entire elaborate story where, like, I went to the future, the LP future, and had to play Super Back to the Future 2, and all these future people came in as guests. It was basically just all a bunch of my friends being guest commentators on this thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think it worked at all. It was far too insular and referential to my inside jokes of the friend groups and bullshit, which... The studio will know that I critique games for this very reason today, because I fell in that same goddamn pitfall. But, uh, regardless, it's something, uh, that person I was DMing, like, before, the one who said that, oh boy, my childhood YouTuber, they mentioned that they really loved that LP, and it really inspired them, and they listed a bunch of their favorite moments. So, here is, uh, one of those favorite moments. This is the future Duke of Kankernickles. As played by uh, Let's Player Sakimoto Fanboy, uh, and me beating the ever loving shit out of him in the climax to the LP. Please enjoy. I have had enough of you! Holy shit. Get back! Hey, guys! Guys, come on, get back here! I don't think that works as well if you're out of the loop, but then again, at this point, everyone who's watching me probably is in on the loop, so. Shrug. That one person seemed to like it, so. It's held up in people's memories over time, I guess. At least one person's memories. But, in the end, I did decide to uh, quarantine all that uh, skit nonsense into its own sub-series, which I called the Silly Voice Adventures. And I had a couple of new voices. The first one was something I invented when Rizu wanted to do a, a, a abridged Digimon series, and we needed a villain, so I just, out of nowhere, broke into a really dark and scheming, menacing voice and shocked everyone. And that voice became the Conqueror, the lovable, cuddly world dominator who hates bloody fangirls. He's, he's my favorite voice to do. It just, it just feels so good to do this voice. You don't understand. I could do the entire video in this voice and it'd be pleasant. But I won't. The other voice, and something not so pleasant in hindsight, was Philip, 
who I created in the Duke Kank Nichols video series. Again, because people were saying, Yeah, your voice sounds gay, so I played it up. I'm like, you think this is gay? Well, maybe if I go up like this, you'll say, Oh, that's really gay. Which, uh, no. I shouldn't have done that. So I'm more woke, as they'd say. I wouldn't do that again. And I kind of downplay Philip now if I ever do voice stuff. I might just talk in his voice just for fun, but never to make any gay stereotypes. No, no. Even though the voice itself might be, but I will. I'm sorry. So, that was that. Uh, we're actually jumping ahead quite a bit. 2010 didn't see too much uh, of importance and influence happen. Well, my old PC that I started making the Let's Plays on did uh, kaput, but a, a pal, a pal from a new friend group I had entered, the, uh, the G Chat, I believe that one was, yeah, Gremlins R Us was her name, and she gave me her old PC. Just sent a goddamn computer from the States to me so I could keep making videos because the old one kept dying, so bless her heart for that. And with it came a dazzle, so I was playing console things like Mega Man 10 on the Wii that I had and stuff like that. But otherwise, 2010 passed mostly without incident. 2011, though, that was a big year for change, actually. <laughs> Believe it or not. And we'll start with uh, something I actually did. I, uh, one of the Chat for Non-Losers pals bought me a Something Awful account, and after, like, in my fourth year of Let's Play making, I finally dipped my toe into the very source of the whole Let's Play thing. So let's look at Let's Play Zelda 2 for Something Awful. Oh, I know what's coming here. One of these guys, who I am just gonna avoid, because really, why would I waste my health fighting this guy for a paltry 100 experience points? I'm obviously fully leveled here. I really love to chase you. Oh, and there's another one of these right here. I certainly hope I'm lucky, because I only got enough for, like, one jump. Huh, good. But friends, why aren't you filling up your life? The answer's in this little room here. This is sort of a recharge point. Going left is a very good idea. Just be sure to wait out these blobs. You know, it's not that much better than what I did in the past, but the mere fact that something awful accepted my silly shit really made me feel good back in the day. If only because I could remember just the scant few years before when... <laughs> Something Awful and the YouTube Let's Play community were at each other's goddamn throats. Like, I remember the days of the Shield Crow Foundation, and as bad as that shit was, like, elitism and war against YouTube Let's Play, as silly as that might sound, it could have been a whole lot worse considering, you know, all the shit we've dealt with in recent years with the harassment on the internet, so that's, uh, that's pretty bad, actually. Now, something else interesting happened around 2011. This was when uh, another community I had joined and was writing for at this point, Socks Make People Sexies forums. They started doing uh, Let's Plays, their members there, and they started a little thing called the Let's Play Olympics, where it was just uh, eight weeks of playing games and uh, being ranked on how well you uh, Let's Play them and stuff. So the LP Olympics were fine, and uh, I actually uh, hosted a competition called the LP Summer Games in the summer of 2011. It went poorly, but the final game that I chose and participated in because I was participating for some ungodly reason, the final game I chose was what I thought was one of the hardest things I could ever pick. And that's a little game that you may be familiar with called Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Let's watch. So basically what I'm saying is, haunted places are the best places to start your video game RPG dungeons. Game designers take note. Ha! As if game designers are watching me. Ha 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 ha! Goddamn! Super Ghouls and Ghosts really brings out the worst to me. It's almost like F-Zero. Oh my. Especially when you get to later levels, it's just... Uh, uh. But I have a pretty good handle of these early stages so far. If I got, like, if you plunked me down in level 4, which I haven't played in a good uh, two years, I'd be kinda screwed. 
I mean, this game is hard as hell. You've got jumping that's really tricky, kind of like Castlevania jumping, where once you've committed to it, that's it. You either land or you die. You've got weapons that are tough to kill these enemies with, enemies that move in erratic patterns, and then the best surprise, which I'm not even going to mention. <laughs> What's really funny about that clip is that uh, Polly and John of SocksMakePeopleSexy.net would have seen it back in the day. And they're game designers now, so <laughs> guess the fuck what passed me. Game designers watched that video. <laughs> no, but this is a turning point of sorts in my Let's Play history. This combined with a challenge that Mega G Wolf of the Mega G Chat gave to me to clear the Hunt for Red October on NES in one sitting, which I did. And in doing so, I kind of learned how to uh, practice and beat hard games. So I used that on Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and I beat it. Several times, in fact, and then I did a Let's Play of it. But the real, the real crux of the issue never came until 2012. Something like the summer of 2012. <laughs> that was when... I did this! You guessed it, instant death. Now this part is tricky, you gotta manly jump. You really wanna just hit the jump button when you're almost falling off. And here we go! The speed your fingers have to move to dodge this barrage of walls coming left and right is ludicrous. And it'll take you a lot of practice before you can get it down. But I just beat the impossible level! And that, my friends, is the birth of the hard game beater. If the first five years of my LP career were all about, you know, making connections and all that stuff, getting friends, then the latter half is all about playing hard games. I played some more Battletoads games, played a lot more Ghosts and Goblins games, I did Silver Surfer, I did all kinds of hard game things, both on and off the camera. <laughs> It kind of became my defining thing, so to speak. But I don't really have any big accomplishments other than that for the five years, because it's around this time, 2015 or so, that I kind of started dropping off the whole Let's Play thing. I was, I was focusing more on uh, writing and uh, reviewing things, and occasionally vlogging. <laughs> so we'll highlight a few of those things here, but uh, before that... Let's let's look at the hard game thing again in detail just a bit. So, here is a quick snapshot, uh, run through a bunch of clips from uh, five years, 2012 to 2017. Enjoy. With that being said, we're just about done with this level, and hooray! Thank God you're saying, "Oh boy, I beat that, but that's great." Okay, maybe we can get back to some beat 'em up bullshit or something. Even though I got 2,000 points. Oh, you shut your mouth, Gordon. I, the fun died a long time ago. Yes. I know, the figurative road is long and stuff. <laughs> so you think, oh well, I beat the driving level, that's great. What's next? A couple of beat em up? Maybe a shim up? Well, guess what? It's, it's more, more fucking driving! driving. Now, 5 4, I don't like. The idea is there's a spike floor coming up and you have to hurry and move it. The problem is they made the spike floor too goddamn fast. And it's nearly impossible to avoid getting hit by the things. Thankfully, thankfully, it does not kill you outright. It just takes away health. But you could have had a real exciting sequence. But no, no, let's just make the spike fall fast as shit. And make the whole thing last 25 seconds. And take the bottom route here. Because otherwise, you got to deal with pumpkins and dodging fire in close proximity. It's tough. Got an option if you need it. And hang back, because the uh, fire is going to fall on you. Speaking of fallen fire, oh, isn't this just a lovely gimmick? Now it's dripping from the mouths of these skull demons. Our girls. More pumpkins trying to sneak up on me. Oh, I hate this part. You just gotta gun it when the time is right. And how do you know? You, you just have to know. Like, you just have to have good timing on that part, Sal. You just gotta sort of... Look into your mind's eye or whatever. So let's see what's up ahead! Jesus! Ah, uh, 
good hard game beater times, huh? As I said, around 2015, I kind of, you know, lost my creative drive as far as the Let's Plays were concerned, and that kind of slowed down. But that doesn't mean I wasn't making things, so... Next, I'd like to show off some uh, non-Let's Play clips. Some might be gameplay things, but they're not strictly Let's Plays, so to speak. Just things I did with people, or things I wanted to show off. Just assorted odds and ends. So, here are those. There is one thing that we should bring up regarding the new series, actually. Is that you noticed quite a few concepts that, uh, in this episode that have been used in the new series. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Uh, Stephen Moffat is a thief. <laughs> Basically. This is a fake. That, but the, the the really bit. Well, you said no spoilers, so can I can I sort of state it outright? Well, uh, you, hang on. When you We're, said spoilers, you mean not to ruin the episode for everybody? I meant spoilers don't ruin City of Death, but uh, you're probably about to talk about the series seven finale. Well, it's just that the, there is a there is a major plot point in the final episode of series seven, they have the Doctor, which actually pertains to Clara's true identity. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here with the damn villain. Butt Street. Do not enter. Do not enter Butt Street. Well, <laughs> the Handrigan House. Yeah. Yep. Definitely know that house. I know this street. I remember this one from the last vlog. There was Newfoundland music playing. Oh, these houses aren't very far from the lovely Grand Bank basement. Uh, I'll just save my place in my dirty pair of bookmark. What the fu- What the fu- Oh, mother fu- Okay, kids. Allow me to introduce you to an Eastern Canadian delicacy I picked up from the local pizza place, Greco, in Grand Bank. It's a donair. I'm going to open this donair, and I'm not going to- I'm just going to do a cut as I open it up, because one handing this shit would probably be messy, so one moment. Now, I don't know if you can see that very well, it might not look very appetizing on camera here, but this consists of a pita with a shaved spicy meat, not like a shawarma or a gyro, and a sweet garlicky donair sauce. It is divine, it is delicious, and it is about to go into my body. <coughs> And that just about catches us up. There are a few more clips, but I'll introduce them in a moment. I just want to sign off right here, right now. Thank you to all of you. Those of you who have been a pal of mine for the past ten years. Those of you who have sat around and watched these things. Not just the Let's Plays, but all the vlogs, the reviews, the stupid little one-offs. I wouldn't be doing this without all of you. I really wouldn't. So, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. It's been a wild ten years, and I don't know if we'll make ten more out of it or not. Uh, the future is not written in stone, but I'll keep going for as long as being an entertainer on this little channel here is fun to me. So, uh, raise your glass, and let's give a toast to more years and whatnot. All right. So you're about to see three more clips to end the video. The first is my most current Let's Play that I did uh, in the summer of this year, 2017. Shantae Half Genie Hero. The second is uh, perhaps my greatest accomplishment in my Let's Play career. And the third, a little taste of what's to come in 2018. Happy New Year, everyone. I love you all. You keep doing you. And I'm glad you support me in any way. Goodbye! So we just go into the airship and, uh, yeah, there's a... more grenade throwing. Look at this guy. No, I don't want to for that, now. There we go. That's, that's, that's the ticket right there. Salon sucker. Oh, that cannon has a smiley face. Oh, that cannon's a little fuck face. Let's see what that cannon is. Hitting me. Or maybe I'm the fuck face for getting hit. I'm not sure. But... Keep design. Oof. And I ran into the canvas. 
time. You can tell I'm, I'm great at this game. Just perfect. But here's where I want to just stall for a little, a little tiny bit. Because I want some of these roasts. And also these guys have got lots of gems and hearts and shit, so... We can just get a bunch of that, and I'll eat this one. Uh, yeah, the roast. <laughs> Oh, I, I already stopped. I'm back to psychedelic eyeball stream, except there's a chat for it. <laughs> maybe, I should try, maybe I should give a test of the harvest yard and counter I want to on here. Watch two streams Is that Freezing Oops. Inferno who just said that? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes. I'm, thanks. I like your stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> oh my god, Slobby Flex, my thanks! <laughs> <laughs>